In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello, everyone. Today is the feast day of St. Thomas, the Apostle, uh, patron saint of many things, but among them, India. Uh, so uh, we have many Christian brothers and sisters, my friends, in India, so we are united with them in our prayer and in our desire to imitate St. Thomas uh, in his courage and in his commitment to Jesus. I'd ask you to please keep in your prayers today uh, Father Will, uh, our former parochial vicar. He begins his new assignment uh, today. So please keep him in your prayers in a special way at today's Mass and all the good people that he will be ministering to in Hull and uh, Cohasset. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you peoples. Glorify him, all you nations. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe, because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
My friends, one of the challenges of living in modern society is the overwhelming presence <laughs> of the internet um, and so how often it brings out not the good in people, I'll put it that way. Now, the internet can be used for good and uh, social media, etc. For example, you're watching Mass on it right now. But too often, I think it brings out the nasty and critical side of people. Society, in general, seems to revel in bringing out the worst in people. Take a generally, pick a random person, a generally good, decent person, but flawed, as we all are. And in modern society, we tend to focus in on the one thing that somebody did wrong. And that is how somebody is looked at, judged, and portrayed. I often wonder if Jesus came today, rather than 2,000 years ago, how he would be treated on the media, uh, or really on the internet and social media. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Thomas. Now, Thomas was an incredible person. He was a flawed person, as we all are, but a brave person and a holy person. He is credited with bringing the faith to India. That's why he's the patron saint of India. Uh, specifically, the southwestern part of India is often, uh, tradition goes back that St. Thomas actually made it there. In case you're wondering, the distance uh, walking from Jerusalem uh, to Kerala, India, is almost 6,000 miles. So St. Thomas presumably walked from here to California and back just to bring the faith to Jesus. <clears throat> he even gave his life for the faith, which is why I'm wearing red. What is the one thing people talk about when they talk about him? Very few people mention, oh, isn't he the patron saint of India? Very few people mention his bravery and courage in bringing people to the faith. Very few people mention a very specific thing from today's gospel that he was the first person to do, and uh, a very powerful thing. Most people say he was the one that doubted. So my friends, <laughs> my response to that is typically, okay, he was also the first one who said to the risen Jesus, my Lord and my God. Maybe that's what we should focus in on when we think of St. Thomas. My friends, today's feast day can be a reminder to not always define people by the weakest moment in their life or by the worst thing that they've done, but see them in total. There are some people who are mean and nasty and have given their lives over to evil. I'm not saying that we should look at somebody like, let's say, Adolf Hitler and say, well, but, you know, he was nice to his dog and to his girlfriend. No, no. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, my friends. But most people fall into that middle area. Flawed, but have great qualities too. And perhaps we should be concentrating on bringing those out in other people. And that should be the one that we should be pointing out to other people. My friends, let's not revel in the mistakes of others, but always try to see the good whenever we can. Try to see that Jesus loves them as much as he loves us, and how much he wants both of us to be saved. My friends, united in our desire to be saved, united in our desire to be with Jesus in heaven, we bring our prayers to God. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for our Bishop, Sean. We pray for those who will be ordained priests for the Archdiocese of Boston this year that they will persevere, and that they will be the good priests that Christ has called them to be. For this, for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our sisters and brothers in faith throughout the world, in India and elsewhere, for all of those who are persecuted for their faith, martyred for their faith, as St. Thomas was. We pray that we may be inspired by their bravery and that, we, that those who persecute others will have a conversion of heart. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In these days when we approach Independence Day, we pray that we may always be reminded of our dependence on God, and may we always 
cherish the freedoms that we have and hold them dear. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who put themselves in harm's way every day for others, for police, fire, rescue services. We pray for all of those who minister to the sick, especially those in hospitals. And we pray for the sick, especially for uh, those who are suffering from coronavirus. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in a special way today for Father Will Sexton as he begins his new assignment, that the Lord may be with him and with his people. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, remove from our hearts any fear, any doubt. Fill our hearts with courage, with conviction. May we all echo the words of the wonderful Saint Thomas on this day, my Lord and my God. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers, to grant them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We assemble spirits one and all. Washing of the Lord's hand many of these evening. Come to me from the night of the Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We render you, O Lord, the service that is due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the apostle, St. Thomas, and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known, are, are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs with Peter, Paul, and Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, Cosmos and, Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, 
In all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flocks of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering. In every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant. Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with their holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant we pray that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, before the final blessing, uh, we are, are going to try to say the Hail Mary every day. Uh, you, you, I've encouraged you to say three Hail Marys before you go to bed for all of those who will be ordained priests. Pardon me, for the Archdiocese of Boston uh, at the beginning of next month. So please join me in praying the Hail Mary for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle, St. Thomas. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.